In this webisode, we'll learn how to create a confetti mess just like the one you just barely saw. To get started, let's open up Motion and choose NTSC Broadcast SD as our preset. That will make our project 720 by 486 pixels in size. Click on OK. Motion comes with a bunch of pre-built particle emitters. These are not only just cool and handy in a pinch, but can also teach you a lot about particles. For example, check out the pyro particle emitters. If you click on one like Blurry Sparks, you can preview it up here. As a matter of fact, you can click and drag on it to see how it would look when animated. This is a really cool feature. To gain a better understanding of particles, let's build our own. Select the Rectangle tool and create a little tiny rectangle. Oh, that's a masterpiece. This should be on my mom's fridge. Okay, in all seriousness, we have a piece of confetti here that I would like to duplicate so I have a lot of confetti. As you can imagine, creating or duplicating the confetti a piece at a time would be a lot of work. This is one of the reasons why the particle feature in motion is so powerful. So, make sure the rectangle is selected and hit the Make Particles button. It looks like nothing has changed in the canvas. Hit the space bar so we can see what we did. Lots of additional particles are generated. OK, stop playback and hit F5 to open up the project pane so you can see that our original rectangle has been disabled. It has now become the cell source. We now have an emitter and a cell. The cell is our rectangle. If you delete the cell source, you can see that it is no longer in the cell. So let's undo that. If you look up the word emitter in your thesaurus, one of the many alternate words is project, which is what the emitter does. A projectile is a projected object, as if that's not obvious. An example of this would be a rocket. So the emitter is a rocket launcher and the cell is the rocket. Changing a parameter for the emitter, such as the direction, will affect the cell, whereas changes to the cell will affect each individual particle, or in this example, the rocket. Okay, enough talk and cool rockets. Let's see this in action. Hit F4. If the emitter is selected, then we get an emitter tab. If we select the cell, which is the rectangle slash confetti looking shape, then we get a particle cell tab. Reselect the emitter and notice how we have a cell control option. This is everything we just saw in the particle cell tab. This makes it so we don't have to keep selecting the emitter to affect the emitter parameters and then select the cell to make changes to the cell. So the top affects the emitter and the bottom affects the cell. The first cell control option is birth. Move the slider around and notice how we can control how many particles are created, or should I say, born every second. For example, make the birth rate 1. Hit the home key to get to the start of the project. We have one particle. If we move the playhead to one second, one particle is created. At two seconds, yet another particle is born. If you change the birth rate random slider, you can see that it makes the birth rate, well, random. Now, the birth is not on every second. Get the birth rate randomness slider back to zero. So what we want to do is create the effect that there is no confetti, and then, all of a sudden, a bunch of confetti blasts out towards our camera. To achieve this effect, we need to start our birth rate at zero, because we don't start out with any confetti. Select the cell and make sure the playhead is at the start of the timeline. Make the birth rate zero and hold down the option key and click to create a birth rate keyframe. Next, jump down the timeline to one second and 13 frames. Hit the A key to turn on the record button so it will create another keyframe when we change the birth rate. Notice how we have red here to let us know that we've turned on the record button. That being said, 
change it to 300. Yeah, if you're not going to go all the way with confetti, you might as well not bother. Go to 2 seconds so we can make the birth rate 0. Look at that. I'll quickly undo that. Look at all the confetti we have here. When you make the birth rate 0, notice all the confetti that goes away. That way, we will have a burst of confetti. Otherwise, the confetti would just keep coming. If I hit the right arrow key to move down the timeline, you can see that there is no more confetti being born. Hit the A key to turn off the record button. This is looking great, but we can make it look even better. First off, our confetti is only white. How about a bunch of different colors? Notice in the particle cell section, we have a color mode option. Click on it and choose Pick from color range. Notice by default we have some red, purple, and blue in our color range, and our confetti is the same. They maintain that same color throughout their life. This is a good way to add depth to your particle system and make it look like you have more than one item repeating itself. Let's add even more color by clicking on the preset pop up menu and choose Rainbow. If you're wondering what in the world these different gradients look like, go to the Library tab and check out the gradients. And there's Rainbow. Hit F4 to get back to where we were. Notice how our confetti and color range match. However, what if you were working with something other than white? Let's temporarily make our white rectangle blue. Notice how our confetti is not taking on all of the colors in the rainbow preset. That is because motion is tinting the blue rectangle the rainbow colors. Tinting by definition is a slight coloration, or rather a shade of a color. I'm just making you aware of one of those gotchas. So let's set our rectangle back to white, which will take on any color. And we once again have the confetti taking on the full color range of the preset. If you back up the playhead to the start and check it out, you can see that we have a nice animation. However, the forces of gravity should be pushing the confetti downwards. Luckily, motion comes with behaviors that can make this easy to accomplish. Make sure the emitter is selected and go up to the Add Behavior button. Go to Simulations and then select, you guessed it, Gravity. Let's quickly scrub through this and you can see how the gravity is pushing the confetti down towards the Earth. Not to get sidetracked or anything, but wouldn't it be really cool to have your own gravity behavior in the real world that you could just turn the gravity on and off with? I mean, that would be cool. Anywho, in the Behaviors tab, here we can choose how strongly the gravity will affect the confetti. I think 61 will look quite nice. Having confetti that shoots out towards the screen is one thing, but having confetti that lands on a floor is another. I think having it land on a floor creates a more real effect, and who doesn't like a big mess to clean up? So let's add a floor. We could spend the next 5 minutes building one, or we could just hit the command and two keys to get to the library tab. Go to Content, Backgrounds. Find Gradient Stage 11 and then select it. Hit the Apply button. Seeing as how it's covering up our confetti, go up to Object and then select Send to Back. Oh, uh, whoops, um, notice how the stage starts where the playhead is. Move the stage so it starts at the beginning of the animation. Also, hit F1 to open up the Properties tab. Shrink the scale down to around 69%. Unfortunately, if you scrub around, you can see that our floor is not stopping the confetti from flying off the screen. Looks like we'll have to tell the particles there's a floor here. Make sure the emitter is selected and go up to Add Behaviors, Simulations, Edge Collision. Hit F2 to open up the Behaviors tab. Notice how we have multiple edges that we can affect. If you hit the Home key and then the space bar, you can see that we have confetti bouncing off the bottom, left, and right sides of the video. The reason the confetti is bouncing like a bunch of rubber balls is because the bounce strength is set to 
If we crank it down to around 16%, this causes the confetti to slightly bounce when it hits an edge. Speaking of edge, I really only want the confetti to be affected by the bottom. So let's uncheck all the edges except for the bottom and front. It still looks kind of odd that the confetti isn't getting all over the floor. To remedy that, adjust the height. And by the way, notice the width and height is 720 by 486, which is the size of the NTSC broadcast SD preset that we started with. Make the height around 288 so our confetti is more on the floor and not the bottom here. Currently, our confetti is landing in a line here and looks very flat, as if it's 2D, which it is. If you hit F4 to open up the emitter tab, you can see that we need to check the 3D checkbox. And look at that, instant depth. Let's increase the depth even more by hitting the F2 key to get back to the behaviors tab. Increase the depth to around 558. If we play what we have so far, you can see that our confetti starts to disappear around 5 seconds. Because this is not magic self-cleaning confetti, let's hit F4 to return to the emitter tab. If you look in the cell controls, our life is 5 seconds. That means each piece of confetti is only on the screen for 5 seconds, because the life is set to 5. If you look down here, our project is 10 seconds long. So make life 10 so the confetti won't disappear. When our confetti hits the ground, its angle should be different than it currently is. Select the rectangle in the project pane. If we scrub around, we can see that our confetti starts hitting the ground around 3 seconds. Hit F1 to open up the Properties tab to create a rotation keyframe. Change the X rotation to 120. That looks like the confetti is the right perspective for landing on the ground. Hit the Home key and mark another rotation keyframe. Change the X rotation to 0 so it starts the way we originally had it. Just to add even more rotation, make the Y rotation something crazy like 220 and the Z rotation negative 360. If you hit the spacebar, it makes the rotation go crazy and then end up where we want it when it lands on the floor. If you select the emitter and go back to the emitter tab, you can see that we have rotation options, but only the Z axis. We really want it to affect the X rotation, so that is why we animated the rectangle with keyframes. If you watch the animation all the way through, you can see that our confetti never stops sliding across the floor. To stop the confetti from moving, we're going to utilize the drag behavior, which simulates friction on moving objects. Go up to Add Behavior, Simulations, Drag. Because we want to stop the confetti from moving once it has landed, let's move the playhead to 6 seconds. Make sure the drag behavior is selected and hit the I key to mark an end point. That way the behavior starts here at 6 seconds. If you scrub down the timeline, you can see that it doesn't quite do its job. So let's increase the amount of drag. First, select the Z box because we're working in 3D space. Then hit the space bar so we can see what we are doing and increase the amount to 1.6. That helps our confetti slow to a nice stop. If you pay real close attention, you can see that the layer order on some of the confetti changes. That looks very weird. Notice how if I move back and forth on the timeline, they switch their order. Under the Emitter tab, we have a Drag Ordered checkbox. Uncheck it and notice the confetti ordering remains consistent. Well, if you watch through our confetti animation, you can see that all of the confetti rotates at the exact same time. 
To add just a little variety, let's add one more cell. To do this, duplicate our disabled rectangle by selecting it and hit the Command and D keys. Next, hit the F6 key to open up the timeline. Notice how we have the rotation keyframes. If you can't see them, click on the little button down here that looks like a keyframe. Select the keyframe that is at 3 seconds and move it down the timeline to around 5 seconds and a half. Hit the Home key to get to the first keyframes. Change the Y and Z rotation to 0. Now we need to turn our rectangle copy shape into a particle. So what if I wanted our new rectangle to have all the same emitter and cell settings as the original rectangle? We changed some settings and added behaviors to the original rectangle and it would be a pain to do it again. Luckily, we can use the same emitter. We could just drag the new rectangle onto the emitter, but we still need to make changes to the new cell to get it the same as the old cell. Notice how we lost our color range and birth rate keyframes. So for our purposes, this is not the best option. Let's undo that. Select the rectangle cell and hit the Command and D keys to duplicate it. Hit F4 to open up the Particle Cell tab. Our last option is Particle Source. Drag our new rectangle onto the Particle Source well, and when the hook-shaped arrow appears, let go. Because the two cells are duplicates of each other, they are directly on top of each other, making each piece of confetti look real big. If you go to the Random Seed Selection and click on the Generate button, it will create a new path for our confetti to follow. Hit the Home key and Spacebar and you have confetti. Confetti makes everything fun. I mean, check this out. Surprise! Mmm, vegetables! Yes, my friend, even vegetables are fun when confetti is involved. Well, if you enjoyed this tutorial, then you'll love my motion training DVD called Moving with Motion, which is available at creativecowtraining.net. This has been Steven Smith and up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA. Oh yeah.